Hey, Tony, how you doing today? Good. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, uh, I guess I'll start with, obviously, you guys were really getting things going offensively uh, before the bye week. How, how do you carry some of that momentum throughout the bye week in Iowa City? Well, we just continue working the the fundamentals and all the all the little things that we're always working on right there to try and get better, uh, try and find different ways, get the ball to some different people and, and keep moving forward in our offense right there. And and uh, also get anybody that's a little bit dinged up, get them as healthy as possible. I think that's the greatest thing about having a bye week. You know, we've had two of them now, but this late in the season is even though somebody might be playing, they might just need that one week to just, you know, get a get something feeling just a little bit better, especially for those last two games. This Iowa defense has been pretty good this season. What challenges do they present to you guys? You know what? They've been playing good defense ever since, you know, I can remember. I mean, uh, I, I first entered the league in around 1999, and they're playing the same defense now. Obviously, they got some different things they do off of it, but they've been doing it for a long time. They're always going to be strong up front. I think the uh, the, the strength of their, or their defense is up front, especially those two defensive ends and their linebackers. Uh, you know, their safeties, they, they've been playing a lot of snaps. They know what they're doing. They're going to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, they're always a good tackling football team, and they're going to make you earn your way down the field. Uh, you know, Minnesota, I think 14 of their points was on two big plays, one on a fourth down and one on a double move uh, in the fourth quarter. So they make it tough on you. you got to earn your way down the field. You know, we got to do a great job in a, in a, uh, a, a big-time atmosphere. I think this is one of the tougher places to play in the Big Ten. Um, they're tight, they're all over you, they're always going to show up, and we got to do a great job communicating, taking care of the football, and obviously get the ball in the end zone. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Hey, Tony. I hope you enjoyed your bye week. Uh, Brandon Peters has played pretty well in the last couple of weeks. He seems to kind of have a different kind of swagger, different kind of confidence, I guess you could say. What went into building that in the last couple of weeks? I just think it's 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 getting reps in there and being comfortable and being uh, healthy. You know, he he really, I mean, he got hurt at the beginning of the year, the first play, the first uh, game of the season. Just him being healthy and getting in there, having people healthy around him, uh, he feels very confident and comfortable in our offense right now. And and he's and he's throwing the ball well. And because of that, we've got to make sure that we're throwing the ball more with him and giving him more opportunities to go out and do that. He's not putting the ball in danger. He's taking care of the football. He's really not getting sacked very much. A lot of times uh, sacks are, are more quarterback related really than offensive line related. He's doing a great job of getting rid of the ball on time, making good decisions and, and knock on wood. I mean, BP's playing really good and we got to keep taking advantage of that. Yeah, and then during the bye week, and I guess as you go into this week of practice or preparation for Iowa, what kind of things do you want to see him improve upon or build upon from the last two weeks? Just keep moving forward and what he's doing. You know, be able to hit the – you call the layups when they're there. If there's a wide open curl route, make sure you're hitting them. Make sure you're not putting the ball in danger. And then when we get the opportunities, which what he's done a good job of the last few games, is when we get some of those chunk plays down the field a little bit is hit those bigger plays. And he's done a good job of that, and we've just been trying to build on that. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, Tony, uh, points are at a premium when you play Iowa and particularly in the red zone, it, it seems. I wonder if that uh, changes mentality for you on a drive. If you get down there, do you take points any way you can get them? Um, you know, is a field goal a win sometimes? I know you want to be in the end zone, but yeah. you just you take the field goal or, or, you know, do you have to kind of figure out a way to get in the end zone? Well, ultimately, at the end of the day, anytime we're in the red zone, whether we're taking the field goal or not, comes up to Coach Bielema's decision right there. Um, but, you know, as soon as we get to a certain point on the field, we kind of look at it as, okay, we got three points in our back pocket. And what we got to make sure we don't do is give up those three points with either a sack or a turnover or something of that nature, a lost yardage play. So once we get to a point where we feel like we got three points, we're always going to keep being aggressive, trying to get touchdowns. You want touchdowns over field goals, but you got to make sure at the end of the day that you still get the three points at the worst case scenario. And then um, you know, to borrow a baseball analogy, if the pitcher is doing really well, that sometimes takes pressure off the bats. I um, wonder if you feel the same as an offensive unit with how well the defense is playing for you. Um, does, it, does that loosen things up for you guys? Well, uh, definitely. I mean, I've been I've been part of uh, uh, staffs where where the defense has given up 40 or 45 points a game. And to be a part of staff right now where 
they're giving. I don't know what it is, but it's not very many. I mean, they're playing awesome. Coach Walters and our defensive staff is doing a great job. It, it, it changes for you, and, and you, you don't have to feel like you have to take as many chances right there. We still got to be aggressive and make good decisions, but it, it definitely changes how things are played out on the offensive side of the football. football. And Coach talks about it all the time is playing complementary football between offense, defense, and special teams. And I think we're doing a good job of that. Obviously, on our side of the football, though, we've still got to be striving to score more points and put more points on the board than what we've been doing. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned how tough of a place Kinnick is to play at. Does it help to have a head coach that knows it so well that play there? Can kind of demystify a little bit. Uh, you know what? I think the biggest thing of having a head coach like Coach B is that He's been in a lot of these stadiums and he's done it a lot at a very high level. And, and that obviously is not going to affect him at all, being in that stadium, that atmosphere and everything. I think for some of our kids that haven't been there, they just, you know, the, the, probably the best thing that's going to help them is the Penn State game uh, that we had this year. Uh, probably the biggest difference really is just the, the uh, lack of uh, room on the sidelines and how tight those fans are at, at Iowa. And I know it's been a while, but the stadium hasn't changed since I've been there. So they're right on top of you. They're very loud. They're very into the football game. And really, it's a fun place to play. You just got to be ready for it and be prepared. The, the crowd there causes trouble for offenses, though, doesn't it? Generally, I mean. Generally, I mean, they're going to cause some issues if you're not ready for it. I mean, you've got to right. be ready for a very loud, violent football game from the crowd. And you've got to anticipate it, not let it bother you, and get out there and embrace it. Make sure your communication's at a premium right there so you don't have any pre-snap penalties. And as long as you do that, you'll be okay. But you got to understand third downs are going to get really loud. Uh, you get down the red zone, it's going to get really loud. And you got you got to be ready for that. Make sure you're paying attention to everything. And communication, like I said, is going to be at a premium. Thanks, Coach. Tony, with, with Brandon taking the layups, as you call it, is that something you've seen him significantly improve on over the course of the year? Or is it just something to, to keep hammering home? No, I think he's improved as the years went on, you know. BP's a, a very naturally God-given ability out there to throw the football. I mean, he, he, he's got the arm talent. Sometimes he puts his body in a little bit of some funky uh, positions when he's throwing it. We've been working on it hard this year, and he's really gotten better at, at, at getting on himself on his front foot, staying on his front foot, and being more balanced. And I, I think that's paying off in his accuracy. With someone who has as much experience as he does, how do you kind of coach that into him and, you know, this condensed schedule that you guys have together for one year? Well, you, you just got to show him some of the body positions he gets into when he's throwing the football and how he, he's not as accurate as he, as he could be. And once he's seen that and seen what he needs to change right there, you know, BP is all about making it right and doing everything he can to make it better. It just it doesn't happen overnight. You know, you throw a football a certain way and that's how you throw it, like like doing anything and having to adjust something and getting on your front foot a little bit more and staying there has definitely helped him. It's helped his accuracy. And 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 every time he gets a little bit better at it, he wants to even do better and better and better. So he, he works at it hard. He's putting a lot of work at it. It's paying off. And now we need it to pay off for two more games minimum. I know we've talked a lot about him and the leadership quality dating back to the spring and the vocalness there, but he's a guy who looks like on the field, he, he plays with some fire when things are rolling. I mean, we've seen him kind of, kind of let out some emotions. Have you seen more of that or maybe just a, a heightened sense of it here in the last couple of weeks? I think he's gradually gotten better at that as the year's gone on. Uh, but definitely on game day is when BP's his most, you know, what you want him to be out there. So not only has he gotten better at it, but then game day really brings it out of him right there. Um, like I said, we talked about he's had two really good games. Now we got to back it up with a minimum of two more right here. We got a, a tough one on the road, and, and he's looking forward to it. And I can't wait to watch him play out there. And then I guess if, if, if I can get one more here, Casey is a guy you talked about him being like hand to hand, what one of your best guys out there and one on one situations. What makes him so good in that spot out there? He's just probably our biggest and most physical wide receiver out on the edge. And when it comes to going one on one out there with contested throws, he's got the most physicality and, and, and the most strength at, at, at creating a little bit of separation when there probably isn't any. And that's all you need is that just little bit of separation right there to get your hands on the ball. He's a natural ball catcher with his hands. He reaches out and extends, and he does whatever he has to right there at the end to make sure he comes up with those contested throws. And he just he's, he's the best receiver we have at it right now. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate it. Yep. All good? You guys?